Um, I'm Rafaela Guns. Um, I also go by Rafi. I'm a junior at Lang, majoring in journalism and design and minoring in gender studies. I'm Thomas Blakely. I'm a sophomore at Lang and I'm double majoring in literary studies and culture and media. Uh, I'm Anna Miliak. Um, I'm a freshman at Lang. I am a journalism and design major with a minor in literature. Um, I'm Adriana Pahimas. Um, I'm at Lang. I don't have a major yet. Um, I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Petra Zahra Gerard. I am a sophomore at Lang. I study politics and global studies, and I'm the editor in chief of The Antithesis. The Antithesis is an online publication started by me, um, mostly just reporting on social justice happening here at the New School, but also re we report on stories happening throughout the city, even stories nationwide. But the whole purpose of this paper is to have an open forum of discussion for students to talk about anything that really matters to them. That's really the central theme of the entire paper. In a way, we also serve as a supplement to the already pre-established news voices at the school mm -hmm. in that we don't just voice what is happening within the school but also outside and we make sure that the school itself is aware of socially motivated movements mm -hmm. and um, subjects. We are a semi-political paper, I think it's just by nature about what we talk about. <laughs> I think something that's like great about the antithesis is like there's no sort of limits on what you can or can't write or can or can't say. There's not like an editor being like, oh, cut this whole thing, or reword this whole thing, or you can't write about that because that's not relevant to our specific audience or the specific time frame or whatever. It's kind of just like, not like a free-for-all, but just like, it's just an open sort of thing. Like, yeah, like we, we like peer edit each other's stuff, but it's mostly like small edits. We're not like changing each other's voices drastically or anything like that, so. And that's and like, was always the main goal of the paper. Mm -hmm. That's always what I wanted. I just wanted like as much as I wanted to like write about everything that I was pissed off about, I really knew like there are so many other people that are just as upset as I am about this stuff and rather they articulate better probably you guys articulate things way better than I can ever for sure. I get angry way too fast. Um so I think that's also just I personally started it because I felt as though there are so many wonderful things happening at the school that don't get recognized or sometimes students never even hear about at all and that also accounts for many issues happening throughout our community and it really made me super upset as a student because I want to know about what's happening at our school. I want to know like these are the kinds of things that people are talking about, these are what other people think. So I just really wanted to have some kind of open forum for students to talk about what mattered to them and to feel as though like nothing was restricting them from saying what they wanted to say. I originally started off the antithesis as a calendar. I was like, okay, we're gonna have all the events listed that are happening on these days. But I remember I called my mom like super angrily on the phone and saying like, but I really wanna do something more. She's like, just start a newspaper, let people write what they want, send it, let them send it to you in an email and it'll be perfect. I was like, you know, that's a good idea. So I have to thank my, <laughs> gotta thank my mom for that one. Um, but mostly just because I felt as though there was this huge gap here at the school that needed to be filled, and I thought my little paper could try and help in that kind of way. Um, it's also, I think that contributes to the fact that, firstly, we're all full-time students, we're super busy, we can't keep track of everything that's going on. So that's also one reason why we don't know what's happening, but also because there just hasn't been some kind of medium of communication whatsoever to talk about these issues. So typically when we hear about something like, oh, this is happening, we had no idea. So I think that's also one reason why it's important to have even a small paper like ours to just like contribute to the conversation and get the people talking about what's happening here at our school. My article was about The Last Ship, which was a show on Broadway that closed in January, and it had um, themes, like, it, it was one of the first, it was the first um, Broadway show to spout Marxist theory and discuss these themes um, in an industry where um, socially motivated shows aren't usually heard. Um, I wrote an op-ed critique of Emma Watson's he for she speech at the United Nations last year. Um, I just thought it was problematic in many ways and I found that most of the um, response or the responses to the to her speech were in 
were cast in a really positive light, but I wanted to highlight the issues that came up. Um, well, one problem that I had with her speech was that she was framing it in terms of male participation and kind of taking away from what I think is the main point of feminism, which is a movement created by and for women. So I didn't like that she was kind of not necessarily opening it up to men, but the fact that like she was using language to imply that it was that like it was for them or um, the first article I wrote was about this trending hashtag, um, which was no hymen, no diamond that I saw emerging. And as a, as a feminist, like I thought it was horrendous. Um, so I wrote an article pretty much just kind of like shutting that down and talking about like why <laughs> it's bullshit. Rappy shuts things down. <laughs> yeah. um, and the second one I wrote was about uh, conversion therapy amongst LGBTQIA youth um, in light of Leela Alcorn's suicide in December. Um, and I interviewed, I reached out on forums like Reddit and Yahoo Answers to find people to talk to who have um, experienced conversion therapy and I um, use their voices in my piece to highlight how problematic it is. I've mostly written about social issues in the arts. Um, I critique Femme of the Opera for being misogynistic. I wrote about capitalism and madmen and I wrote a piece about um, urban isolation. Um, the first piece I did for the antithesis was... American Sniper. Yes, I wrote a that critique That was so American good! Um, yeah, it was... I just had so many issues with the movie, um, even before I watched it, and then I watched it toward the article, and I had even more issues <laughs> with it. <laughs> so, yeah, and then the second, um, I used the, like, alleged relationship between Kylie Jenner and Tyga <laughs> um, to talk about um, patriarchy in relationships and how normalized it's become for older men to sort of recruit and, like, groom young women to be in relationships with them and um, what that means, especially for girls of color. Um, so, yeah. And um, the second article I wrote was um, a critique of meninism, um, which is a Twitter trend where guys will basically just complain about how they think they're um, less privileged in society than women are, and like just pick fights with feminists on the internet. Um, after that, I wrote um, another op-ed about the Salvation Army's um, anti-domestic abuse PSA um, using the dress and how, again, I thought that was problematic and insensitive to victims of domestic violence. And the latest article I wrote was um, a critique of um, the new school's rebranding <laughs> and highlighting, <laughs> highlighting the problems All about with what that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's mostly a lot of the articles that all these wonderful people have mm -hmm. written. Some other pieces that I'm trying to think of, there have been so many, so many articles. Um, Another writer that we have here, Joe Giacona, he uh, wrote this piece about how community spaces are being closed down, um, like performing arts spaces, and they're due to gentrification. And that was like a really beautiful piece. I thought it was a really nice article to open up with for the paper. It was in our first edition. Also, we had another um, piece written by one of our other reporters, Marco, about how not to be a voluntarist. And he sort of talked about how all these very privileged kids from these very rich neighborhoods would go to rather unprivileged countries and and sort of like take advantage of their chance of trying to help people and mostly use it to take like selfies with these kids and not really care about what's happening so I think like what I find so unique about this paper is the fact that I I don't tell the writers what to do at all I don't say hey this is a topic this is an idea I let them we all sit in a round table and I go around and say hey what is bothering you like what do you want to talk about what do you want to write an article about and sometimes they write even two articles and it's fantastic but I think by having that element, it just gives the writer a lot of freedom to express things that really matter to them. And I feel that's really important. It's a central theme of this paper. Um, I know for me, like I keep a note in my phone of just like topics and ideas that I wanna look into more and think about. Um, like for the upcoming issue, um, I did sort of a social experiment on OkCupid where I made a fake account as a girl and started messaging guys in like overtly sexual ways, the way that they message women to see how they would react. Um, so I, I don't know, just things like that that sort of pop into my mind is interesting. I, you know, make note of and then sort of research or flesh out later, like when the time comes to pitch, the, pitch and write the article. 
Um, <laughs> for the most part, I just try to keep in mind um, ideas, keep a mental note, and try to develop the thesis throughout the period before it's due. <laughs>
within this time, and especially I think by having this paper and having everyone write these articles, I, it's been really beneficial to me. I don't know, maybe same for you guys. Like everyone talks about all these different issues. And be like, hey, I didn't know about this. Like this was an issue. I didn't know that this was happening. And so I think by coming here, it's sort of just like opened up my mind to think in a lot of different ways. Because now I feel like I have a better understanding. So when someone talks about something, I'm like, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's such a good feeling. Um, but definitely, ever since I came here, like my political understanding has been insane. Uh, yeah, exactly. For the past couple of years, I've been <clears throat> broadly aware of social inequalities in the world, but since coming here, I've been able to more deeply analyze them and be aware of the ways that these power dynamics manifest themselves in day-to-day -day interactions, rather than just like in larger structures. I think it's like a, a mix of both. Yeah. I think it's definitely the kind of like progressive nature of the school because, you know, it's not like a typical university where there's a professor and like a hundred students and we're just like taking notes. Like we actually, you know, sit around a table and like discuss our views and, you know, you get to hear the views of people from all different backgrounds. And I feel like that has more of an impact than just like scrawling notes and like reading a textbook. So it definitely helps you kind of think for yourself and form your own like opinions and beliefs. To go off of that, like, in a way, the new school, you have to know what you want in order to come here. Like, it's not, it's not as well known as, say, NYU or something. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not one of those lump schools, if you know what I mean. No, it's no, not one of those that. huge schools that everyone applies to. You have to know, especially Lang, because oh, no yeah, one yeah. has heard of Lang. <laughs> At so all. You have, you have to know specifically, like, what size of school, what mentality you have to, you want in order to go here. So when you get here, it's like, in one way, it's like-minded people, but in another, if you if you did grow up in a different kind of environment, like I did, it helps you get outside of that that small-minded perspective and mm -hmm. grow as an individual. And in another, if you did come from a place that has a similar mentality, it's like you found home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of um, coming from high school to here, uh, I'm a freshman, so like there's definitely. I mean, what, how the career the curriculum the classes are taught is definitely through a very specific lens I think in most instances or they at least try um, and so I think it, it by nature is uh, political in that way and I, I mean I think just the history of the school um, and all like from how it was founded and then all the stuff that's happened since then um, in the students critique of the school makes it pretty inherently political mm -hmm. like, Oh, well, like, I don't know, I kind of have an interesting story. I kind of, like, fell into this school really serendipitously. Um, my first semester of college, I went to SUNY Geneseo, and that's, like, 40 minutes outside of Rochester. It's, like, in the middle of nowhere, literally, and I was born and raised in New York City, so that was, like, a huge culture shock for me on one hand, and on the other hand, like, I just didn't really feel like I fit in there. Like, I was doing fine academically, but, like, I just, like, Netflix was my best friend the whole time I was there. Like, I didn't really go to any parties or anything like that. Um, so I, I was, like, miserable there, and I wanted to transfer, and I was originally going to look to go to, like, Hunter or Baruch or something, and I figured, okay, maybe I'll take a semester off and just take, like, one or two classes at the new school. Um, and this was literally, like, November, December, like, right at the end of the semester, and the new school was like, oh, hey, like, we're still accepting applications. So I was like, okay, I'll apply, and then they were just like, yeah, we're accepting you, and here's some, like, scholarships, and, <laughs> and so I was like, oh, like, that's really cool, because, like, originally when I was looking at colleges, like, I was like, I don't want to be in New York City, like, I want to go away, I want to, like, experience something different, but it's, it's weird how, like, I've actually found this place that I feel like I belong, and it's not where I, you know, expected it to be, um, and I feel, I love it, like, I love how this happened, because I feel like I've really sort of blossomed and evolved from where I was, like, just a couple years ago by coming here. Um, and I loved the, um, the fact that you could take what classes that you want and, like, almost build your, um, your curriculum around that. And, um, I loved the writing program, and when I got here I was like, writing, yeah. And I was like, oh my god, the film program is good too, so I was like, okay, I'll look into that. And then I was like... It's like a bunch of, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes! Like, which one do I choose? <laughs> Double nature! <laughs> yeah. So I think... I was like I was drawn to the radical sort of pedagogy and the um, way the school is set up and obviously the seminar classes like I didn't want any lectures mm -hmm. um, so yeah <laughs> then I was like okay I'll go to the new school I'll take a tour and I 
had a, I actually had a really awesome tour guide. <laughs> <I did. laughs> um, and I was like, wow, this is, I didn't expect the school to be the way it was, like the way I saw it on the website, the way that I was told about it. It's completely different. It was, I felt like I kind of found my people and I, I started to belong. Yeah, I was like, wait, I found home. This is like, it, the school felt as though, like, I felt as though the school, like, completely embraced, like, what I wanted to do. And also, like, because of my circumstance, like, I was an hour away from home. I could just take a train whenever I wanted. And my mom was first, like, are you sure you want to go to college? You're still a child. You don't understand a lot of things about what it's like being an adult. I'm like, I want to go here. This is my dream school. <laughs> um, so I came here and I'm um, I also grew up in New York City, and I had known of the new school, but not of Lang. I kind of just associated the new school with Parsons. But um, when I was applying to colleges, I knew that I wanted to go to a really small liberal arts school that was very writing and reading intensive. And my guidance count, uh, counselor actually recommended Lang to me. And of the schools that I was considering, I thought that this one was the best fit for me. I don't know. I don't think... Well, mostly, of course, it's the student body that's directed to you. But I feel that since we talk about a myriad of issues and so many different topics that it can almost apply to anyone. And it, I feel that if anyone just feels like, hey, I just want to learn about feminism, they're like, hey, let me take a look at this article written by Raffaella. <laughs> and they'll just, like, read it. And I think that's what's really great about the paper because we talk about issues that can apply to everyone and that in the long run will affect everybody in the end. So I feel that the antithesis is for everyone. <laughs> Any, anyone who will listen. Anyone who will listen. I, I've and there out, are a lot of people who want to listen. I've reached out to people from Texas. And like I told you, the 200th person who liked the page was one of my best friends from Texas. I was on the phone with her when she liked it. And I told you to take a picture of it, but I, you didn't. I didn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's anyone who will listen, anyone who will, who is open-minded enough and interested enough, not just in the new school community, but in the greater New York community and, be, and the world. And you'd be surprised I mean, to know are, how many people want to listen. Right. You, it, you, a lot of, wow, stuttering. A lot of people think like, oh, you know, everyone's too busy with their lives, they're too preoccupied in everything that they do, but a lot of people just want to be like, hey, like, what's happening right now? Why is nobody talking about something? So I think... And we may be students, but we do have voices that need to be heard. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of, I mean, aside from being a paper that publishes articles, a lot of it is, like, building a platform for the social justice um, sort of community and, like, the events and the clubs that happen. Um, just to bring sort of more cohesion, I think, and awareness to sort of what's happening um, outside of just writing about things, but in terms of the calendar, in terms of supporting initiatives and... Um, partnering with other clubs and stuff like that. We put out our first video. And and <laughs> Canty's comic. Canty's comic. Yeah, we yeah. want to do like, and we're doing Artist of the Month. Artists of the month and mm -hmm. we're starting off with clubs at the New School for the mm -hmm. Month. Like the whole thing is to showcase the work of the students. That's the main goal. Um, so yeah, Artists of the Month, Clubs of the Month. What else? Have we've We've been taking up a lot of initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, we're doing um, the Metro Fair project. We're plugging mm -hmm. that right now. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we're taking that up. That's my friend's project. Um, we're working a lot with adjunct faculty at the moment. We're doing. We were. I was at the fight for fifteen. You were there for a little bit. Um, we all marched. We've been doing some coverage on it. That was also what our first video was about. We've been trying to form some kind of uh, club on campus that students can join. Um, what other things? I think, what other things have we talked about? We talked about so many things. Yeah, we want to like sort of redesign the website and yeah. make it like... Have a dot .com domain. Have a dot .com, <laughs> make it just sort of more user friendly um, in terms of readability and things like that. Um, I like picking up a copy of the New York Times or the Daily News or any kind of publication, just like opening it and reading it. There's just something so satisfying about holding a paper in your hands. And I really want to do that for the antithesis because I feel that the articles talk about very intimate and important topics. And I really want the readership to have like a physical connection alongside their materialistic one with behind their computer screens and keyboards. So it's a goal. I don't know if we're going to have one by the end of the semester, but definitely in fall will be ready with a print edition in hand. <laughs>
by visiting our webpage, theantithesistns.co.vu. They can visit our Facebook page, which is The Antithesis TNS. If you search that, you will find it. We have a Twitter that we just kind of started. I'm trying to work on it a little bit more, um, which is just Antithesis TNS. Um, like I said, we have an email on theantithesistns at gmail.com. Those are several different ways you can find out about it. We're, and we're really know. awesome. So <laughs> we are though. We are paid paid our stuff. We're fantastic. It's run by a fantastic <laughs> group of students who really care about this university, who care about what you think and what you have to say. So please check us out. Go like more. our page on Facebook. More. Yeah. Follow us on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs>